Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of The Crypto Show. My name is Dirk and on today's episode I want to talk about good entries into swing trading positions and I'm going to show you one of my Bitcoin trading cheat sheets that I use specifically for swing trading. Swing trading means in this uh, context, those are positions that I personally want to hold on for anything between a day to a maximum of two weeks. So good to see you. Let's jump right into and open up the charts. Hey, welcome back to episode two of my Bitcoin trading cheat sheet series. On this episode, we want to talk about swing trading. So about positions that you intend to hold on for maybe a day up to a maximum of two weeks. In episode one, we were talking more about long term positioning. So one year plus positioning for that we were using this Bitcoin logarithmic regression. We are not going to use this of course for swing trading. If this chart however does not at all look familiar to you, you probably haven't seen part one of this, then I'm going to leave a link for you up here on a card so you can re-watch that video later. A lot of good information also in terms of long-term positioning of course, a lot of stuff that are also important for swing trading position. Now for swing training for short term positioning, I like to use a rather not so classical setup. So I'm not so much looking at a classic technical setup where I have a chart where I put a lot of indicators to kind of time my entries and exit uh, from the market. I, this is just the second step. The first step I'm always looking for in terms of swing trading are so called on chain metrics. And for that, I'm using a website called CryptoQuant.com. I'm going to leave a link also uh, to that for you uh, in the uh, description of this video. In the description, of course, you will also find everything else that you need in order to start uh, trading. And we also have a nice offer at the moment for you in terms of trading bonus. So if you ever thought about getting into trading, this might be a good, good uh, starting point right now and a starting time right now. Um, all right, so from all these different on-chain metrics that were available, I'm interested in one specific on-chain metric, which is called the Bitcoin taker by sell ratio. Now, what is a taker by sell ratio? Whenever you place an order as an exchange, you can either be a taker or maker. And the difference is a taker takes liquidity from an order book, a maker puts liquidity into an order book. If I bring up here the uh, order book, for example, a snapshot that is of the order book for Bitcoin, uh, you will see here on the left uh, marked in blue all the buy limit orders that at a certain point in time uh, are in an order book for Bitcoin. On the left, uh, on the right, marked in red, uh, all the sell limit orders that are in the Bitcoin order book at the time I took this screenshot from it. Um, now, a limit order is a so called uh, maker order because you put liquidity into the market by placing a limit order. Now a taker is somebody who takes on the contrary uh, liquidity from an order book and uh, this sounds very complicated it really isn't so it's for example every time you log into your prime xpt trading account and for example you sell one bitcoin and you have the order type market market means the order gets executed immediately for the next price and I send this order here, you see it's automatically immediately executed. This is a so-called taker order because I take liquidity away from those uh, limit orders that are in the order book. And uh, this uh, taker by sell ratio then measures uh, which sites uh, are of, of taker uh, of orders of taker orders are preferred at the moment. If the metric is above one, that means that more buy market orders are executed at the moment than sell market orders. So it kind of shows you uh, where uh, the average trader that wants uh, his or her trades executed immediately on which side of the market they or in which direction they are trading at the moment. And whenever this threshold goes above 1.08, or below 0 0.96, uh, I intend to go either long or short. To be precise, whenever this metric goes above 1.08, 
I like to open a short position, a short term short position, a swing trade short position in the market. When the metric goes below 0 0.96, um, that is for a moving average that I applied here, by the way, uh, I am looking for long entries into the market. And I, I've sketched this out here uh, for the last month really for you uh, when this metric was, so uh, a short position was initiated here when the, uh, when the metric was be, uh, above 1.08, a long position was initiated if it was below 0 0.96. And you can see here very well, just with this metric alone, how well you can really time the market already. So we had a short order here, almost at the local top here. We had a short order here, almost at the local top. Same here, a long entry here. We had a short entry here. We had a long entry here, another short entry here before we had this large slide down there really. And we had another short entry here. And you can see out of this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight orders, seven orders, very clear and very easy would have led you into profit. The last one we saw here was a little bit more of a difficult one. Uh, so in this case, nothing is perfect, of course the metric was, would have failed us. However, seven out of eight entries uh, giving us really the good indication which direction the market is going is really, really brilliant in my opinion. So really with this metric alone, watch here for the moving average going either above zero, uh, above 1.08 for short entries or below 0 0.96 uh, for long entries. You can already without any other indicators, very good time very often if the market is probably in the next hours and days going to trend lower or going to trend higher. Now, of course, you can take this and then you can also maybe combine it with your favorite indicator. So if you see, for example, we are above 1.08 uh, you might want to look from your classical indicators like the RSI, like uh, uh, like moving average or whatever you might use, Ichimoku clouds and so on and so forth for more short entries. On the contrary, if you're, we are below 0 0.96, you might want to look for more long entries. Very, very easy. However, make sure always to use here also stop loss because if the market go wild, if there are like black swan events, for example, another surprising high inflation number or a surprising low infl inflation number uh, for that matter uh, comes out, of course, the market will react to this and any metric, any technical indicator will become at least for a short time useless then. All right, as you can see, Things do not always have to be very complicated. You just need to know which tools to use at what time and for what uh, purpose, of course, too. Again, if you like videos like this and you want more content like this, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel. Always remember to use the stop loss. Stay safe out there. I'm going to see you very, very soon again. Bye bye.